Well, hello there and happy Sunday. Guess what? It's Mailbag. I'm Mark Riley and look who's here. It's Josh McCuga. Hey, uh, one time I delivered mail for a buddy uh, when I lived at the beach in yeah. the summer of 2002. Nice. Uh, I wore his jacket, sort of like the episode of Seinfeld when he subs in for Newman. Oh, yeah, that's right. Mail on a Sunday? <laughs> 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 this uh, why didn't you wear your suit then, dude? I mean, this is mail bag. I know, but I you don't could... have the suit anymore. I borrowed oh, it. Oh, uh, yeah. Just like I act- I acted like a meter maid one day that same summer. Parking enforcement. It's the Lord's work. Okay, so we're gonna change tactics here. We're gonna just forget about these questions. We're gonna have Josh McCuga regale us with uh, stories about uh... summer of two thousand two. Let me tell you guys a little something about that summer. Lost my virginity. No, I'm kidding. Ooh, that's a whew, look at the time. Wow. Well, as you know, guys, it's mailbag. You can send in your questions to at Collider Video at gmail.com. It's, uh, it's where we get everything. We pick them for mailbag. We pick them for movie talk. We answer your questions. We're going to do it right now with the first question, which is Brandon. And Brandon writes, hey, guys, I was re-watching The Force Awakens and thought popped in my head about the parallel between the sequel trilogy and original trilogy. What are the chances that Snoke will not actually be the big bad as the Emperor was, but Kylo Ren will be? What if upon the completion of his training, Kylo Ren turns on Snoke, killing him, thus reviving the Sith to finally be what his grandfather was. Then he would be the main overarching villain of the series not to be redeemed. It would be a good way to keep it switched up and different without being another rehash of what we already had. You guys are awesome, and thank you. That's a good question. Uh, I don't know. Josh, what do you think? I know you saw Force Awakens, right? Uh, well, yeah, I've seen all the Star Wars yep, movies. Yeah, that's I, good. I think that uh, we, we were talking about it earlier this morning, uh, the, uh, Rogue One is my favorite. Yeah, Star Wars movie. I love it. Just watched it the other night. Yeah, it's it's really good. Still, it's still it it held up for me. It was great. I don't think if they don't tell us or give us more hints at who Snoke is, that the the collective Star Wars universe doesn't revolt. Doesn't all thousands of people cry out at the same time like the like, the <laughs> like Obi Wan? Yep, right? exactly. Uh, you you can't listen. Kylo Ren is a is a pawn in a Ponzi scheme mm-hmm. uh, of Snoke's. So yeah, you can make him a big. You, you can do. It's not, you're not going to build your movie on Kylo Ren. You're going to build another movie on Snow. Yeah, and I, I totally agree with you. I, would, I was going to say the same thing, because if you, like, let's say in The Last Jedi, Kylo Ren turns on Snoke without getting all the answers we need about who the hell Snoke is, you're right. People are going to feel gypped. Now, would you be up for it if we learn who Snoke is? He's Let's say he's tied to the Emperor somehow, or tied to the Imperials from the original trilogy, or let's say he's just an ancient being that everybody has said that he is, um, and we learn, okay, that's the definitive version, that's who Snoke is, and then Kylo Ren kills him, usurps the the galaxy, and, and goes from there. Kylo Ren kills Snoke. Fantastic. They yeah. Give that dude, a, you know, a set of nuts. <laughs> instead of just being this whiny dude that's slashing, uh, you know, the whatever, the you're on the, what, you know, the control board. Thank you. Right? Yeah, that right. Give me a second to get there. It's been a long weekend. The control <laughs> board, Mark. He's just slashing his thing. No, if he takes out Snoke, Better for yeah, because then the third movie, episode nine, that's Kylo Ren's you know coming out party. He's out there with two lightsabers, he, he's at Mardi Gras killing everybody. <laughs> he's like just beads yep. throwing. Yep. Like, yep. yep. Yeah, I think that's the only way it could really really go. And and personally for me, I would love for Snoke to be a bigger connection that kind of unites all the trilogies, prequel. See, I always wanted Darth Plagueis, which is prequel talk but the the fact that it all connected somehow i want that i'll be fine with snoke being somebody that is the grandmaster moving the chess pieces snoke like is, you said snoke is darth vader he just came back to life oh yeah yeah under a ghost and now that's that's just snoke is. he's 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 also boba fett and tarkin and mace windu and he's also princess leia which princess is weird Stewart, the entire cast of will and grace you know yeah there it is so let's move on to the second question joshua writes hey collider crew greetings from australia hey he should have said good day mate yeah, yeah. yeah. stuck in spiders mate off awful oh my god they have huge spiders <laughs> there spiders, we yesterday answered the arachnophobia movie have you seen uh, that arachnophobia yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, first of all, I was scared of spiders before arachnophobia. Even more scared. Of, I won't go into if your basement isn't finished in your house. I'm not going in. Yeah, yeah. 
As you as you can see, this is going to be an off the rails mailbag. We're just going all over. We just referenced yesterday arachnophobia question. Anyways, Joshua continues writing. <laughs> Short question: Is it just me, or do you also think it's really a terrible move if DC doesn't include Superman in the marketing for Justice League? We already know he's going to be in the movie. We've seen Henry Cavill in the behind the scenes video, and there's the jail toys of Superman already. Plus, I wouldn't want to buy a jail poster without Superman on it, especially knowing that he's in the movie. Thanks for your time, and thanks for taking my question. Yeah. Well, Joshua from friggin all. <laughs> nah, you gotta, you gotta put Superman in the bloody trailers, mate. Yeah? I, you know, I don't know, I don't know how to answer this. You know, I'm a Superman guy, yeah. And I know Super. Look, we know Superman's gonna come back. He's probably gonna come back either in the middle of jail, uh, Justice League, or at the end of the movie. It's kind of like, oh my God, we need help, and here's Superman last minute to save the day. Or maybe they'll just do it middle of the movie, and and they unite and take out. Steppenwolf and all the parademons, well, but well, if if Warner Brothers, uh, or you know these the the trailers for these movies, the Zack Snyder universe, right, or any indication, the first trailer won't show Superman. The <laughs> second man, the second one will show how Superman comes about, what he's doing, and how the movie ends. So, um, <laughs> yep. we're gonna see Superman at some point. Yeah, I don't think that the early marketing is showing Superman because they're trying to get that fervor going, and then a month before release, it's gonna be like, guys. Watch this, Superman, and then boom. I I think you're right. I think uh, I think with that marketing, they're they're probably going to show their hand. The only other example I have is Luke Skywalker in Force Awakens. They didn't show him at all. He wasn't on the posters, and you only got to find out what happened to Luke when you saw the movie. Now I don't know if DC and Warner Brothers marketing is going to do that because of Superman being Superman. It's amazing they did it with Luke. Yeah. I mean because. It's Luke Skywalker. You could say that Luke Skywalker, Superman, Clark Kent, those are two of the most iconic characters in movies of all time. I, so I, I, I don't know what they're going to do. I listen, think if I was Warner Brothers, mm -hmm. I would not show Superman. I would. I, people come to theaters going like, how does Superman come? What's he going to do? Not, you know, in the trailer when Superman comes out and he's frying eggs, like we don't. <laughs> he's don't frying know. eggs. No. I want to know when I go to the movie how Superman comes in. I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you because if they show him in the trailer, which they're probably going to do. What's the over-under on the, the fact they're going to show I'll him in the trailer? You, I'll give you 75%. Okay. You want to take it? Over-under. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it at 75. You take it at 75. I, think it's, I think it's a good number. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's like kind of right there. And they're going to show it, and then guess what? You're sitting in the theater, and all of a sudden you're going to wait, wait, this looks like the trailer. And you're going to realize that you know exactly when Superman's coming up. That's what I hate about what trailers do nowadays. They show their hand way too early. But that's just it. So there you go. That's it. All right, let's move on. We have Michael writes, Hello, Collider. After listening to your show Monday, I couldn't help but think about the subject of it possibly being a contender for the highest grossing horror film of the well, year. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I picked it. I wanted your thoughts on this. Although the Alien franchise is technically sci-fi horror, do you believe it belongs in the ring with it in terms of becoming the highest grossing horror, sci-fi horror, uh, of the year? The buzz behind Alien Covenant seems very well received, and I, for one, cannot wait to see Return to Ridley's World. Your show is a sensation to enjoy at work each day. Hey, thanks, Michael. I appreciate that. Uh, it, yeah. I think based on the fact that the It trailer is now the most watched trailer of all time in a, in a span of 48 hours 24 hours i, I can't remember I what it was things now where it's like it's the most watched trailer on across platforms in 12 hours 24 72 48 it's like they're all basically creating awards it's like the guinness World book of records like yeah. he, he, he juggled for an hour this guy juggled for an hour on a unicycle this juggled, guy juggled for an hour on a unicycle on a cruise ship yeah like they just keep <laughs> adding things to the record but i will say and i didn't mean to cut you off but I will no say, please I, you know, I watched the trailer once. That's all you I did, yeah. yeah I thought you would, by the way, I was filming you from behind oh, man. because I thought you would d jump out more, and you didn't. And I so I deleted the video because I'm like, nothing to see here, yeah, folks. Yeah, Keep it, moving. It's definitely not as scary as like the Conjuring trailer. But, right. Um, <laughs> I, w I will say, I, I have zero to little interest in seeing Alien Covenant, but it actually gets me kind of excited. Like, that looks really interesting. It has a little bit of a Stranger Things vibe. Stephen King, obviously a horror mastermind, but he's not just jump scare is like a conjuring, right? Stephen King is one of the smartest horror writers you're going to see. Yes. So it's going to get in your brain. It's going to be creepy. And the worst part about Stephen King movies, as far as horror goes, is when you leave the theater, you can't stop thinking about it. That's the problem with Stephen King. When you watch movies that are jump scared, you walk out, you're like, all right, I was scared. That yeah. That. Stephen King, you look around the corner. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That, it, Turn on all the lights, Mark. It, 
is uh, I've read the book. The book is phenomenal. Isn't the book like this thick. The book is huge, yeah. and it's so worth it. Though yeah. I read it in high school, and then I read it again like I don't know, maybe five years ago or yeah, something. Smack that book out of your hand. And- <laughs> <laughs> you probably it did. Really, it so that was daunting. you. That was me. That, <laughs> that book always just looks so daunting. It is. I mean, it's but it's a it's a character study too. You're going. You're flashing between worlds. You're flashing between the the older adults that that have still taken the tragedy, the 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 the, the Pennywise mm-hmm. confrontation they had as kids with them into adulthood, and then they have to go back. And then same with the kids. You're in the kids' point of view, and Pennywise is the most freaky thing in the world. It's freaky. I, let me know. Okay, the book. I will go see the movie. Oh, the, I can't wait. As for highest grossing, I I think it could. I think it really could. It's contingent on it being one of those movies like Get Out yep. and Don't Breathe where people talk about it after the fact so that people go, wait a minute, I have to check this out now because that's the only way you're really going to make it the biggest of the year, especially when you're talking, if you're comparing it to Alien, the Alien franchise, that is a sci-fi horror movie, but that's such a big brand. That's like blockbuster. A- Aliens is, you know, that's a movie you line up for in line and you go and you and you see it opening night. I'm going to do both, it and Aliens, but um, Alien. Alien. Yeah. Alien Covenant. Covenant, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. I think... Uh, you know, I'm obviously going to go a little bit later in the it run. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully, when there's not that many people around, because <laughs> you don't want to be sitting next to me in the theater. If you see me at it, sit because I will scream. <laughs> I will grab you. I will kick. Like I, there's there's not one part of me that won't be totally freaked out by this movie. I might even cry. Who knows? <laughs> I'll do all of it too, but I'll enjoy every minute of it. All right, thanks for that. All right, I recently. Uh, where are we now? Okay. Uh, Okay, here we go. Sorry about that. Ryan Evans writes, Hello, Collider Crew. I recently discovered your channel, and I've been going back and, and watching past episodes. A few weeks ago on Mailbag, you talked about The Martian and Alien Covenant have a prologue that was released on the internet to help get audiences into the movie. And was thinking if something like that would work for Star Wars or even Marvel or to get you excited for even a possible Obi-Wan film. What do you think? I love those prologues. I, I, I do too. Um, I love that they did it for Alien Covenant. I love that they did it for The Martian. They do not need to do it for a Marvel movie. They don't need to do it for a Han Solo, Obi-Wan movie, or a Star Wars movie because they it doesn't matter. Well, I, you already have enough source material Yeah, and for the, for the prologue not to really meet, like matter. You, I could even argue that they didn't have to do it for Alien Covenant, yeah. that it was just a nice treat. The Martian is a great example. It's a standalone property. Yeah. Because it, it, the Martian is like they're trying to drum up, just like you asked, that they're, they're drumming up interest in the movie. So if you see the prologue, then you, they want you to then go, great, I'm going to go to the movie and pay some money. Alien Covenant, what a nice treat. You get a little, you know, you get a little information on the big crew that they have, the, the, the characters, the character names, the actors who are portraying them. Sure. I mean, look, if you had like a prologue for a Han Solo movie, you talk about Han Solo. Hansel. Him Han Solo. Called him Han Solo. My mom. I know. I call him Ham Solo. Ham Solo movie. Ham Salad. <laughs> Is his name Ham Salad? Whoa, whoa, whoa! There yeah. got to be a sandwich shop out there with a Ham Solo, right? Ham Solo. Yeah. Well, have you seen the Hardware Wars? No. That was. It was Augie Ben Doggy. I think it was. I can't remember Luke's, but Ham Salad was his name. Mm. I believe it was a spoof. Um, but yeah, a Han, Han Solo movie, a Han Solo movie, or an, even an Obi Wan film, or something from the Marvel universe as a prologue, people are gonna watch it. I just think if we're talking marketing and getting butts and seats, you don't really need to do that with those big Would things. Would we like to see it? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Does it need it? No. No. Yeah. All right. Let's move on. AJ Wright, Take Collider Crew. My question is, what is your favorite theater experience that were not a screening? So, like, no press screening. Uh, for me, although the movie wasn't grace, uh, great, it would be Suicide Squad on opening night at Disney World with everybody cosplaying, and there was a fun feeling in the atmosphere. Thanks, and keep up the great work. Yeah. Any any theater experience that you remember, yeah. I actually prefer going, not going to press screenings. I like to go opening night if it's a movie I want to see because with with press screenings and since we've joined this this industry yeah there are like seven on a Tuesday after a long day of work you know sometimes you you want to go to the movies with your friends at night per your prep for the movie yeah get your popcorn you're not rushed there after work sit with the people that you work not that I don't love the people I work with but we all talk movies all day long it's sometimes nice to go with people outside the industry I totally agree I've been turning down press screenings just because a long days B got a long drive and I'm tired yeah I, I just kind of want to go home and four what was that on three four um 
I, I have a, a, a girlfriend that kills me if I go see these movies without her because I did that with Suicide Squad. Sure. She wanted to see it. I saw Suicide Squad and I went, oh, oh boy. I just don't tell. I just, oh, no, I didn't see it. Let's go see it. And I sit through it and I fall asleep because I've already seen it once. I, I should have done that yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I I refused to see Suicide Squad again. My girlfriend was she, Julie was pissed. Yeah, she was like, she was like, what the hell? I wanted but to on see a it. Good movie, you would go see it again. I did. Yeah, I did it with Civil War. I did it with Force Awakens. So, um, but my fa- one of my favorite experiences was uh, Freddy versus Jason. Okay. That was a lot of fun because of the build up to that. There was like this marketing campaign going on where you were like. Who do you pick? Who's going to win? And then you would like pick like Jason or this. Okay. And so then I went with one of my friends that is a just, he's so fun to be with in a movie theater because he would scream really loud, mm-hmm. but he would do it. He'd screw with people. I mean, he would absolutely fuck with people during the movie where right before a scare was going to happen is like that split second before the actual scare. He'd go, ah, and people would <laughs> jump everywhere and then everybody would laugh and he would, def- it was, and he's like, oh, sorry about that. I, I get scared at cats or something, whatever it was. And people are like, oh my God, you asshole. But everybody's laughing. Right. That was fun. Um, the re-release of Empire Strikes Back at Man's Chinese. Okay. We went. That's fun. That, that was fun. Everybody was cosplaying and everybody was, um, you know, running around. And in fact, when the crawl started, uh, a guy got up and screamed and ran down the aisle and then came back up high-fiving as the crawl's going on. And we were all just like, we were in college. We were all drunk and awesome. having fun. I love it. That was another one. Yeah, any any for you? Yeah, I mean, one of them is actually a press screening, which is pretty crazy. Because, oh, nice. Uh, it was for that movie, The Visit. The M. Night oh, yeah, movie. yeah. And it's just a scary movie for yeah. me, at least. I know it probably didn't scare a lot of people out there. But, no, it's uh, creepy. Yeah, it's creepy, right? Yeah. I sit next to Tiffany Smith. She was holding on to me. I was holding on to her. We both bruised each other's arms. Dude, Tiffany. Oh, my God. Yeah, what, what movie was I seeing with her where I'm just like, ah, ah, yeah. ah ow. She digs. Yeah. yeah. She gets scared. That... Uh, I think Clark Wolf was standing behind us. She didn't make a peep. She was just laughing at us <laughs> for how pathetic we were in <laughs> our terror of the visit. Uh, I One of the better ones I had was uh, first time... The first Harry Potter movie came out. Mm-hmm. Went to see it in a packed theater. Oh, that's Pittsburgh. fun. Yeah. Everybody's cosplaying. Everybody's hanging out. Everybody's cheering when all this stuff happens. And I, I did that actually for uh, Half Blood Prince, too, but that was out here, which was awesome. Yeah. My first theater experience was incredible Indiana Jones and Last Crusade. Oh, that would have been great. In Pittsburgh. That would have been great. One of the, I'll tell you one of the cooler theater experiences I ever had. I saw a sneak preview of Cool Runnings. <laughs> Back in the day, the John was Candy, twelve years old, twelve years old, and it was it was a packed house again in Pittsburgh. Everybody, it was so much fun. You didn't realize how amazing that movie would become. And the, mo- stay. the movie was so great. It's still in my top ten favorite sports movie. Oh yeah, it's 100%. it's phenomenal. Yes. So uh, I uh, I one quick one. Terminator 2 Judgment Day so good but I remember there was there was like everybody was just like bouncing off the walls because it's Terminator and it's like we're all there and like it cuts to like the future and the apocalypse Mm -hmm. and there was like a dead skull you know in the car you like and yeah it's before that though it's kind of panning over and then the skull but there's like a dead body in the car and it was silent because the movie just started and it goes boom and then all of a sudden Grandma! And that's just the crowd lost their mind. It was so fun. Like some guy just yelled it. I'm like, my God, that was fun. And I was like oh, young, having fun. That's amazing. So, all right, that's some good ones. Wait. Yeah. One more. Do it. So in high school, mm-hmm. do you remember that movie? So in high school, we would we would use movies as an excuse to go to drink because I would we would hide beers in our coat. Oh yeah. And go to the movie and drink. Right? Oh sure. Yeah. And so there was like ten of us were in the back row, and it was a movie with Madonna. I gotta look this up. Where where she hooks up with a gay dude and has his kid. It was oh like my a god. Calm. It was really really bad. Uh, and I'm in the back, and there's the girls that we went to the movie with. They were sitting in front of us. All the guys are back there, and we're. <laughs> it's like a really emotional moment. I'm not paying attention, and she's Madonna's crying, and all you hear is. <laughs> and, and everybody around turned, and I was like, "What? Like, what? <laughs> Wasn't even paying attention to the movie." I love it when you hear the bottles rolling oh, too. Yeah. That happens a lot when I'm doing yeah, it. Can beer in the. Uh, she has a lot of credits for. Producers. You look that up. I'm gonna tell one more because yeah, it was just so yeah. funny the way the guy did this. It was Batman v Superman. Okay. We were opening night and everybody was just kind of going around. People were in Superman shirts. This guy comes dressed as full on Christian Bale Batman, <laughs> and he walks in with this stride. And people are like, they like look and oh my god, look at that guy. And he just points to the. He just points. He's like. 
<laughs> Everybody clapped, and I was like, what the hell? Here it is, the next best thing with uh, Rupert Everett. Of course. As the gay guy. Of course. And Benjamin and- Bratt is her straight lover, and she, she, she uh, the, uh, Rupert Everett being the gay guy is her best friend, and then they get drunk one night, and they have sex, and he, she has his kid. That sounds like uh, I'm, I'm amazed that it's not more well-known in a box office <laughs> success. <laughs> Great drinking movie. The next best thing. You know what the next best thing that night was? Beer. <laughs> yeah, you would need a lot of beer for that movie. All right, let's move on to this is for Josh McCuga. This is a Josh McCuga special. Okay. Anne writes, Joe Carnahan left Bad Boys for Life, which they say is over which they say was over scheduling issues. I have to bring this up, Mark. But every time I see something like that, it makes me think it's something more like creative differences. Do you think he didn't want to do the movie anymore? And who should be hired to direct? Thanks for taking my question. Michael Bay should be hired to direct. 100%. Okay. Yeah. It's his franchise. Yep. Uh, Bad Boys is a great movie. Bad Boys 2 might be the most perfect movie in cinematic history. <laughs> and Bad Boys 3 should be directed by Michael Bay. He knows what to do with Martin Lawrence and Will Smith. He knows what to do with this franchise. He knows what to do with Joe Pendaglione. He knows what to do with the entire cast and how to make a Bad Boys for Life movie. If you're going to do a trilogy, you're going to call the... I mean, they're saying they do like a four and a five. But if you, if yeah, this is the weird. last one. Let's just say this is the last one. And it's Bad Boys for Life. Which goes out swan song driving yeah. up in the sunset with a '92 car pileup as the yep. entire freeway in Miami's on fire. You want Michael Bay doing it? Yeah. I don't understand. Like, yeah, Joe Carnahan, great director. Always been a fan of most of his work. Michael Bay, he comes under scrutiny by us all the time. Lens flares, Transformers, all these movies that Transformers. Have, yeah, are kind Transformers of <laughs> are, aren't, aren't his best work. He still, you guys forget, he did The Rock. He knows how to make an action movie. And if you're going to do Bad Boys for Life, you got to add the comedy and the action, and you got to add the sex, and Michael Bay loves all of that. Does he subjugate women sometimes? Objectify women? Yes, he does. And I'm sorry, ladies, that's terrible. And Michael Bay, you should really be, really be on Just pull back a little bit on it. Yeah. L- less objectifying of women. What I'm saying is that Michael Bay is the right person to direct this movie. It takes place in Miami. Sex, speed, explosions. Bad Boys for Life. What am I directed, Mark? I would I would watch this movie. I think you should direct it. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but you're absolutely right. Michael Bay should come back. That's his wheelhouse. Yes. I you guys know I hate Transformers. He phoned it in with Extinction. I saw that movie. I have never hated a movie so much in my life. That fourth Transformers movie. It's- it is so bad. I just picture if you pull back from the actual action and then you see the camera and you're pulling back, Michael Bay is sitting with his feet up, drinking a blue drink, playing freaking Tetris on his phone while eight of his assistants are going, I don't know, point the camera there. And he just goes, ka-ching, by the way, you're fired. By the way, you're fired. I, he just, he phoned it in. Get him back to something he actually likes doing because Bad Boys and Bad Boys 2, I agree. There's so much fun. Yes. And That's what those movies are supposed to be. Fun. And hey Guys, we're not going for Academy Awards. In the second one, they drove Hummers through cocaine factories onto a minefield at Guantanamo. Guantanamo Bay. If I would have pitched you that in a room, you would have said you're crazy. But it works in Bad Boys too. I don't know why I'm doing this, but enough, just got a text from my brother, totally out of the blue, says Bad Boys for Life. Look, how crazy is that? That is so funny. We, my brother and I, both love Bad Boys. Are we you together? We die together. Bad Boys for Life. They say sometimes twins actually share a brain. We don't, we're not twins. Well, there goes that theory. I know that. <laughs> Screwing around. All right. <laughs> The next question. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah, I threw you for the loop Ooh, there. Man. I know. I've met your brother. We've hung out. Yes. Come on. Uh, <laughs> then, all right, Christian Rice. Hello, Collider. I'm just curious if you guys. Hello, is in mailbag? Yeah, he's a, he's Lobster? he sent this in. It's weird. It's a schmodown question. Okay. okay, Christian Rice. Hello, Collider. Uh, I'm just curious if you guys heard about the lawsuit Warner Brothers is facing regarding the Conjuring franchise. Do you believe that this nearly one billion lawsuit will stop them from making any more movies in the future? Have you heard about this? No. Can you tell me? Yeah, it's pretty. Uh, it's pretty interesting. So uh, the the and I've read this book, um, the Demonologist. It's uh, the true story about Ed and Lorraine Warren. Yeah. The book's phenomenal, and that author is basically suing The Conjuring and Warner Brothers for basically lifting the book. Really? And so there, it's 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 weird. They I can't really. Have, they didn't have the rights to the book to do it. They didn't have the rights to the book, but they had the rights to the what I believe they had the rights to the, the Warren's life story. Okay. But what this guy is supposing, I think, is that you didn't – you had to check with him. He had a deal with Lorraine Warren at one point. So 
It's getting messy. Now, it's on this it's 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 pretty quiet right now. Yeah. I'm very very interested to see what happens with this because with the demonologist that I did read, it's um yeah, you have the Conjuring chapter in there, the original Conjuring chapter. You have the Conjuring 2 chapter. And then there was even a chapter I went, "Well, there's your Conjuring 3." I love that story. It's like literally this 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 teenager um like starts to have a ghost come after her and then like he starts attacking the house like rocks fall out of the sky it was something weird um i'm, I'm butchering the story <laughs> i love you <laughs> the rocks coming out of the sky was scary it was just like the parents were like what is going on the ghost like took apart the car it was like really weird so it can't, look if they if they go and and rule in favor of this author who i'm forgetting uh, his name then yeah i could spell trouble for the conjuring franchise depends on how much they award the the damages um you a know billion dollars is ridiculous Let's just i don't yeah i don't know if it's a billion dollars though um y- okay. you're finding it there so I, I, yeah 186 million at the global box office that's what that made so uh gerald brittle there it is in 1980 called the demonologist mm-hmm. and Lorraine Warren. He mm-hmm. was a paranormal investigator so he was that for the Conjuring movies. Brittle claims he had an exclusive agreement with the Warrens. Warner Brothers also made a deal with the Warrens, which led to the production of The Conjuring and The Conjuring 2. And Annabelle. Yeah. The third one. And then we're going to get a nun. The well, nun is going to be another spinoff. Well, Annabelle 2. More interesting than your standard Hollywood contract dispute is the movie studios claim that The Conjuring movies weren't based on Brittle's book and that they were based on historical facts. Brittle says that can't be possible because he and other skeptics posit that the Warrens' case files about paranormal and supernatural activity are fabricated. Oh. So wait, he says they're fabricated, and so he wrote them in the book. I thought your book said, based on true stories. Warrens are based on true story. Yeah. Uh, this sounds fishy. Uh, I will that say, sounds pers- fishy. Personally, mm-hmm. I hope they never make another country. <laughs> two, Annabelle, the nun, the priest, uh, Annabelle's sister. Cover your the, ears, Warner Brothers. Just stop making those movies because they scare me, and I don't like them. <laughs> I love it but so much. It's if, so brilliant when they if, filmed you doing The Conjuring, okay, watching The Conjuring. Yeah, yeah. I would do that. Man. That yeah. messed me up for a solid day. <laughs> but, but I remember after that movie, I'm walking through the Grove because we had to go to another screening that night. And I'm like looking over my shoulder. I'm like hearing. Th- it was it was ridiculous. That's but, awesome. And, you know, on Schmoes, we've had the writers on a couple times. And they scared the crap out of oh, me. Oh, dude, their stories. We got to interview them after that last appearance, me and Perry for Nightmares. Oh, ridiculous. God. Ridiculous. Oh yeah, with the, Lorraine Warren's on the phone and she hear they hear hush, 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 and she's like and she's like demon be gone and they're like oh crap yeah crazy uh, yeah silly right yeah so I, I that's just me being funny but I think listen if these movies are based are fabricated and they're not based on true events that's like the James Frey thing the, the uh, million little lies remember that book uh, that that he did and it came out that he made up a lot of it oh yeah oh what James was Frey, that uh, million million strings stringy little faces yeah well, yeah yeah look uh, James Frey anyway um, but if it's not if it's not based on true events they still made all that money right yeah and I guarantee you if if they go to court and settle these this this author may make five million yeah, is he's not gonna make a billion, but this is kind of uh, okay. Now that we've done some research live on camera and Whoa. wasted all your time over there, guys. Sorry, it kind of is fishy. It makes me go, you know what, buddy? You're t- you're telling me that they're fabricated, and you wrote a book that says based on the extraordinary career of Ed and Lorraine Warren. That is posited, yes, like a true story. I'll go even further. True accounts of the paranormal investigators from The Conjuring. That is on the book cover. So you have your name on something saying the true accounts based on the extraordinary careers. And now you're saying that they're fabricated because ghost stories and witches and all these things aren't real. So you're saying they stole from your book. Buddy, you got an uphill battle, I think. Yes. You really do. Yeah. You're kind of, you're, I, I, you're in the wrong. I think you're in the wrong, buddy. So a million little pieces is what it was called. That's James right. James Ray. And then the second one, my friend Leonard. I've read, read both of those. That's right. All right. He does young adult stuff and everything. So. Yeah. Anyway. All right. So we're moving on to the last question. Let's wrap this up. With movies, Roger writes, with all the movies being remade into TV shows like Lethal Weapon, Fargo, and Training Day to some extent, what movie out there do you think would make a great TV show? God, perfect. I picked this, of course, for TV yeah. talk. Sense. Yeah. Every Monday here in Collider. There it is. Tomorrow. Yeah. Um, They've asked us this uh, via Twitter a couple times, and uh, you know, I th- personally I think that 
Obviously, Rush Hour was a complete and utter failure. Oh, God, okay. yes. Um, I think, actually, Lethal Weapon's actually pretty funny. I've, I've, I've heard good things. Episodes. I haven't seen all the episodes, but it's actually pretty funny. Yeah, I've heard and, good and things. Unfortunately, uh, because of Bill Paxton's... <sighs> Sucks. Super sad. Yeah. Uh, that show is somewhere in limbo. Um, and, and Fargo, really and truly, though, Fargo, because it's an anthology series, mm -hmm. and it has nothing to do with the first movie, mm -hmm. which I said before i don't love the movie fargo but i do love this tv show got it this, these and i can't wait for season three which comes out in a couple weeks fargo is is an incredible television series i think a lot of movies like like pt anderson's work like uh coen brothers works uh like um you know even like a wes anderson they create these worlds yeah uh all yeah. based around dialogues and such that would make incredible tv shows like how how much fun would a lebowski Oh. Kind of, but it, you don't even call it. You, it's like a Lebowski kind of inspired series. Okay, member of the end of bet. Okay, I'm, we're going to spoil the big Lebowski for you right now. Okay, spoiler so spoiler alert, alert if you don't want to hear it. Four, three, two, spoil. All right. So at the end of the movie, there there's rumors that a little Lebowski is out there. Right. Would you watch a movie about a grown up? Little Lebowski, 100%. right? The Best son. Donor TV yep. Show ever. The son of of um. Oh God! His first name Lebowski. Um, Jeffrey, Lebowski. Jeffrey Lebowski grows up, and maybe we have cameos from Walter. Maybe we have cameos from the dude. Um, but that would be fun to see. I could be down with that because it kind of feels like a Fargo. It's, I know Fargo is an anthology, which I haven't seen. I love Fargo the movie. The movie for me is Fargo the series is absolutely incredible. That's what I hear. So, um, what about some other movies that might be good? You know what? I, what came to me? You were, you were saying like P.T. Anderson and. Um, uh, Boogie Nights series Incredible. on HBO. Well, they're they're doing a series with James Franco uh, about seventies porn or eighties porn. Okay, okay. Um, and he's got the stash and everything. And I think I mean it's on HBO. I think it's on HBO. Um, is it looks pretty cool. I mean we've only seen pictures. We haven't seen any trailers or anything. Right. Like that. Okay. James Franco for the most part. I mean I usually enjoy him in, in things. Yeah, me too. Um, I, here I think that there are like these worlds that are created by some of these genius directors. Uh, I mean, I would love to see a Fantastic Mr. Fox. Series. Oh, that'd be love fun. That. Yeah, that's that's a good idea. Another movie I've always wanted to see as a TV show is Tin Cup because I think Tin Cup ends in it's a way. It's a good movie. There aren't any golf shows. No. Scripted golf shows anywhere. And golf is it's a popular sport in America. It's a popular sport around the world. Uh, and I would love to see a movie set at a golf course. That'd and, be fun. A driving range like the tin, like tin cup. How about Caddyshack? I don't know about Caddyshack. Yeah. Unless they did here's they did a show on um, Amazon called Red Oaks. It takes place in the '80s at a country club, so it has some Caddyshack vibes to it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's more based around tennis than it is golf, which is kind of funny. Mm -hmm. uh, Weird. Okay. But a Caddyshack show, if they did it at the time period in the '80s, I'd love to see a Caddyshack show. That's cool. Yeah. I would go. I'm going to go back to Conjuring. I think you could do a Conjuring with a. I know you don't want it, and and I know I know how much you really don't want it because then you'd have to watch it for TV talk. No, I'm not going to watch it. Anymore. But I could see that on like a AMC. I could see it even on HBO. Where it's their case files. Oh no! But the guy is suing them over his over the fact that those case files, based on the extraordinary true stories, are fake. Whatever, dude. That pisses me off. Actually, yeah, it's yeah, stupid. Yeah. Uh, yeah there those, are a lot of there. Are, here, the thing that I'm kind of getting at with this question too is, I don't love remaking action movies into TV series. Like Lethal Weapon? Like, like listen. Lethal but even though it's, silly, yeah, yeah. Rush Hour was silly. I think that the... Dude, Beverly Hills Cop, the series, never got off the never, ground. Of course, it, and it shouldn't. Yeah. They are great standalone movies. If you're going to do something like that, like anthology series is sort of the way to go, but you don't need to. Yeah. There are great movies that you don't need to cheapen the brand yeah. by making it a terrible TV show because a lot of times... Big companies have the rights to these franchises, yeah. so their first network they go to is network television. And the last thing you want yeah. is a great R-rated movie being turned into a TV show on network television. They turn it into a procedural, it's poorly done, it's rushed, and it's hokey. I totally agree with you. Yeah, you're. I mean, especially with what's happening out there in the landscape of television, you have your Netflix, your Hulus now, Amazon. your Amazons, you have your AMCs, you have your HBO, Sunday, Showtime, Sunday. Stars. Stars. You have all these all wonderful places where they're going to push the boundaries. So Fargo works in that sense Correct. because... FX, 
might be the best channel on television right now. Uh, yeah, it's up there for me. It's yeah, it. FX is crushing it. AMC is still one of my favorites, even though Walking Dead, man, you're really dropping from the yeah. ball. They should just do a Walking Dead movie and call it. I think so, too. So, all right, let's just call it a day here on this Sunday Mailbag. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. McCoogs, where can they find you? What's going on down there? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the Fly, a TV show on the fly. Yeah, Got it. No thanks. Uh, a Jeff Goldblum docu series. I'd watch that. There it is. Uh, I'm at Josh McCuga on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, Collider TV Talk here every Monday on Collider with my best buds, David Griffin, Shane DeFreeze, sometimes Emma Fife, sometimes Jason Inman. We have some IGN personalities coming on soon, so you guys can nice. Out. And the Josh McCuga Show on YouTube every other Wednesday. I love the Josh McCuga Show. You were a great guest, Mark. We'll oh. again. Well, thank you very much. And you can find me at Riley Around on Twitter and Instagram. Collider Nightmares is back once a month. We're going to be back around May 4th. Look for it then. We'll announce it. Check my Twitter feed. And, of course, Schmozo Main Show, we're there pretty much every Wednesday at 7 o'clock live. And then uh, what else have we got coming up? Schmodown, check it out. I'm taking on that big mouth soon. And I'm What's his name? Tom Dagnino in a five-round match of Destiny. If you guys don't have me in your fantasy league, pick me up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Take him because that's going to be a bloodbath. I can't wait for that. All right, guys. Thanks a lot for tuning in. We'll see you next time.